Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Coinigy's ongoing uh, technical analysis uh, introduction tutorial series. My name is Brian Beamish, the Rational Investor, and here's our Coinigy cert. Uh, excuse me, site. Um, such a handsome looking site. Love this place. Um, so today we're going to go and take a look at moving averages. So. Previous sessions, we took a look at a few momentum indicators. Now we're going to take a look at actually what a lot of these indicators are based off, and that's just simple moving average analysis. Uh, so you see I've gone over to the Coinigy site, loaded up a Bitcoin US dollar daily chart which uh, on Bitfinex, which you can see over here. They give you a nice simple uh, user interface to load in anything. In fact, why don't we do something fun? Let's uh, Dark Coin's been really popular lately. Why don't we do that one? So Dark Coin in US dollars. Wow, there's a nice bull market. Um, and what we're going to do today, I think, is we'll probably um, take a look at uh, two different types of moving averages. So we're going to start with the simplest of uh, all, and that is our what we call the simple moving average. Um, simple moving average in that all it does is it just plots uh, the 10 and and we'll change this to the 10 period simple moving average for you here. Um, and what it does, and why don't we change this to a nice uh, big line, there we go. All right, so you saw how easily I did that. I just simply go into the indicators button, right? I scroll down all our technical analysis indicators, and I select moving average. You notice that there are different types. There's a exponential moving average and a weighted moving average. We'll talk a little bit about exponential moving averages in a bit, and I don't think for the purposes of this tutorial we'll get into weighted moving averages. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but for the time being, introduction to the concept of a simple moving average. Uh, hopefully you can see how straightforward this is, and hopefully you can understand that there's a lot of people that use price charts over the years before we had computers. And so as a result, plotting something as simple as like a moving average, let's say it was like a 200 period moving average, if you don't have computing power, that's actually pretty difficult. And you can imagine how much math is involved just trying to plot each of these on a daily basis, right? Thanks to computers, our lives are a lot easier and we can now plot moving averages at our leisure. Now, what is a moving average, right? Simply put, you know, and if we, you know, if we just take today's date, for example, this is basically the moving, the average price right there, 347 or whatever, right? Right there. That is the average price of this asset over the past, and keep in mind, this is a 10 period moving average. So this is the average price over the asset over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 periods. So this not, this level, Right, that this white line is on is really the average of all of these prices combined. And then as you go back in time, right, you just move the box one spot back, right? And it gives you basically the last bar is going to be the previous 10 bars average price. Right? It's not a very good box, so let's give you a better box to work with. All right, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so it looks something like that, right? Um, and as we move back in time, this level that you see here, right on the very edge of our box, is the average of price over that previous 10 periods. And so as you go through time, it shifts as price shifts, right? It's pretty straightforward. All right, so, uh, you know, there's very simple ways to use moving averages, i.e. prices below the moving average sell, prices above the moving average buy. Uh, you've probably heard in my uh, previous videos, I'm not a fan of anybody trading off of just one indicator. That's uh, setting yourself up for trouble. And if, for example, 
you know, you had used this 10 period to generate uh, trade ideas just on itself. Well, we had a short here and then a buy here and then a short here. And then I don't know whether you got a buy here, then a buy here and then a short here, buy here, short here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You end up what ends up happening is you end up grinding your account and just blowing yourselves up, paying commissions right, left, and center. My suggestion is, oops, we got rid of the moving average, is um, couple your analysis with at least three different reasons to take a trade, right? Uh, moving averages may be one of them, right? Uh, popular moving average settings for trades. Um, if you're, let's say, well, yeah, simply put, I'm a big fan of the 30 period simple moving average. And so you can see how price came down here and then ultimately closed below this moving average here. Pretty good signal. Market came up here, popped up above, came back and tested this level, right? Not a bad entry here, and away we go. But just like I said a moment ago, sometimes moving averages can, you know, cross you up, right? You end up having to take multiple positions. So not the best idea to operate just off of one indicator, but as you can see, this is pretty helpful. Now, um, one, you know, moving right along, you know, we've sort of given you now a simple introduction to simple moving averages. The way, you know, an, another popular, remember we went through the tutorial on MACD, uh, another very popular way to use moving averages is what we call moving average crossovers. This is where I'll bring the concept of the exponential moving average into our conversation today. So I'm a big fan of uh, EMAs because EMAs hug price a lot closer. Now you'll notice, in fact, here we can, uh, just for demonstration purposes, let's uh, change this uh, simple moving average to that same EMA. You'll notice, so this is a simple 13 period moving average and an exponential 13 period moving average, right? And as you look at price, you see, remember the, the red one's the EMA, right? You see that it hugs price a lot closer than the simple moving average. The reason why is because of the math behind um, EMA. Uh, simply put, and let's take, uh, let's do our 10 bar window, right? So one, two, uh, actually this is 13, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. So the uh, moving averages at this point, right, are simply measuring this price action right in here. Right, and it gives you your average on this date right here. And as we sort of move back over time, right, these readings are the average over the green window, right? Now, the difference here, remember we said that the simple or the white moving average, it, it treats every single bar equally. Right, and that's why they call it simple. Right, it's just this thirteenth bar over here has exactly the same weight as this first bar right here. The exponential moving average actually uh, values each period. The farther you go back, exponentially less important. So uh, today's, uh, and I'm just gonna chicken scratch this. Today's on the exponential moving average, today's value is going to be given a one-to-one, -one, let's see if I can even write correctly, right? One-to-one -one relationship. The previous days, it's going to be given a half relationship. So the second day, it has half the value as the first. The third day, 
one third the value. The fourth day, one fourth the value, etc., all the way down to 13. So you can see exponentially over time, the, the weight of the periods gets less and less and less as you go further and further over time. So as a result, the closer in bars are going to drag the indicator higher. I hope that makes sense to you guys. And the farther away bars are going to have less influence on the exponential moving average. Um, you know, we can, uh, you can often see this quite wildly. You see, as price transition from bull to bear here, the SMA, it took a while to turn over, right? Because, you know, even, um, even at this point here, right, say this bar here, it was valuing all of these numbers equally. Whereas the EMA was giving more weight, exponentially more weight to the closer values. So as a result, the moving average hugs the closer in periods a lot tighter. I personally like the EMA as a signaling tool. It works very, very well. Uh, if we, uh, and then remember I said, I really like to use the uh, 30 period SMA as sort of your like trending uh, tool. You know, what's price uh, doing? So if we combine the two, well, let me just get rid of this stuff. All right, we're almost done. Over there, get you out of there, out of there, out of there. All right. So if we combine now the two uh, moving averages, we actually get a moving average system where you can see, in fact, we probably don't even need that, where you can see that crossovers of these two moving average actually represent half decent trade locations. Right? I mean, uh, if you watch my previous videos, you know I'm a fan of market structure, i.e. that's buying and that's selling, right? So you can see how we came down, went up, went down. It's a nice bullish market structure. And what a coincidence, we've got the moving average crossover at exactly the same location. Right? You know, remember earlier I said, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, layering your signals. So here's an example where we have price and we have moving averages telling you to take a trade. There's two reasons. Ideally, I want to see three reasons to take a trade. Um, all right, so as we look at this little asset right now, we got a pretty good looking sell signal right here. And we got a pretty good looking buy signal right here. Not bad, right? not bad at all. All right, uh, so. Good example, hopefully nice little tutorial, giving you an idea, number one, how to get moving averages from the indicator list onto your chart. We've introduced you to two simple, very, very uh, simple moving average concepts, the simple moving average and the exponential moving average and what the difference between those two are. Um, we've also talked a little bit about moving average systems and how you can basically create a buy and sell system based off the relationship of two moving averages of course you know we did a tutorial recently on macd and basically macd is the relationship between uh, the 26 exponential moving average and the 12 period exponential moving average so uh, hopefully that explains a little bit about MACD, or excuse me, a little bit about moving averages and uh, how you can use them, how you can access them on uh, Coinogy and a couple different ways that you can apply them in your uh, hunting uh, for trade setups. All right, so have yourselves a great day, all the best. And I think we'll leave this tutorial at that for now. Thanks you, have a great day, bye for now.